Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Dustin here with Revere Glass. And if you've been a long time subscriber and viewer, thank you so much for your continued support. If you're new to the channel, please hit that like, subscribe, and give the video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel and that way you'll know when new videos come out. This week, I wanted to share something very special with you guys. It's one of the classes from the online school, revereglass.com. Go ahead and check it out here. And if you'd like more information on joining the online school, there's a free trial right now. You can just go to revereglass.com and check it out. Every two weeks on the online school, I do a master class or a mentorship class. And that's an opportunity for a small group of us to get together and support each other during our journeys with glass. It's a really great group of people and everyone's so supportive and positive. I'd love to see you there. So I'm gonna offer a free live mentorship class on August 25th. It's free to anybody. If you'd like to participate in the mentorship class on August 25th, just click the link below, sign up for a free account on the school or you're welcome to sign up for a paid account and then we'll give you access to that class. This week, I'm gonna give you guys something special because I don't have that Sherlock anymore. I've already sold it, but thanks to Mountain Glass Arts, who's been a great supplier and supporter of the industry, allowing people to blow glass all over the world, they've given me some tools to give to you guys. This week, I'm gonna be giving away this pair of jacks. It's an economy pair of jacks, and I think for the price point, it would work really, really well. And uh, you can go ahead and click the link on the bottom if you'd like to check them out. And if you'd like to win this pair, I'll send it to you for free. Just comment in the videos, let us know what you like about glass or anything you'd like us to share, and I will ship this out to one of you guys. We're gonna be giving this away in the next video, and that'll be a week from today. All right, you guys, let's get in the studio and make this Sherlock. Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today for this class. And for this class, we are going to be working uh, with the Bunsen burner. I wanted to focus on the Bunsen burner so that I could teach you guys how to use that heat source to keep your work out of the kiln for a very long time, which comes in really handy when using attachments or making more complicated pieces. I know you guys have seen me blow out a bubble before and do some of this prep work so I did try to skip over some of this stuff so that we could focus more on the attachments of the piece. The first step that I want to do is make a couple of bubbles. I decided to use the color purple rainbow from greasy glass. It's a really pretty color and it can get these different shades between purple, yellow, blues, and reds, uh, depending on, on how much you strike it and everything. So um, it's really a pretty color. I'd recommend it. I think it's actually not too hard to get as well. Um, so I'm making two of these bubbles and I put those in the kiln. So I have the two bubbles in the kiln. And now what I'm doing is I'm gathering up some rod. It's the Nemo color from um, I believe it is North Star. Really beautiful color. And I'm using some Nemo to prep up and make some horns. And for this piece, I'm gonna use horns as the attachment, but you could use flowers or marbles or anything that you want and uh, you know make your attachments. But for, you know, for the sake of the video, I used horns and I'd love to see what you guys make as well. So please post that in the in the forum on the school and we'll check out what you made. So I'm just tapering these down and I'm gonna to try to make some different sizes here and then add all those to the Sherlock. So I've punted up to the narrow end and then I'm gonna pull off the back where the original punty was and make sure that's all clean. Pop that in the kiln and then I'll make a few more horns so I'm just starting to heat this up again. And now I'm gonna attach my punty to the thick spherical part that I just melted in. Make sure that's a nice attachment. And now I'm gonna move kind of more towards the center of the piece and start pulling and tapering. So as I'm pulling, you can see the gradient of the heat and it's coolest where I want the glass to move the least and it's hottest where I'd like the glass to move the most. Now I'm gonna attach the punty here and then remove my original punty, the seven millimeter one. 
And we're gonna repeat this step several times, make as many horns as you'd like. So again, just different sizes here. And I'll be able to use these as they progress and as the work progresses so that I can fit in the horns where where they where I want and where they're gonna fit in nice with the negative and positive space of the piece. So now I'm gonna add on some more Nemo and uh, create another ball of glass with Nemo. I think I ended up using two or three rods of Nemo to make all of the horns that I wanted. And it's just a longer one here. So the taper is much uh, slower. So you want to heat in, this, in a horn like that, you're going to have to heat a lot slower and gradient and making sure that the tip or the thinnest part is the hottest. And you might even want to pull a little bit as it's cooling down. And that will uh, really help help with the shaping of the horn. So I'm just going to heat this up a little bit now and marver it and pull it down. And there might be one more little horn left here, so I'll remove any excess glass. Just kind of shape this up just a little bit and see if I can grab one more out of the last little piece of glass here. I'm just going to attach the punty here to the bottom so I can get a really nice stretch on this one. On this one, I'm heating up a little bit more at once and trying to pull down the tip so that I can get that really nice gradient heat and make a nice pointed horn. So now I have my first bubble of the purple rainbow and I'm going to punty up here and usually on the first bubble I like to make the stem of the piece. So I'm going to heat up the part closest to the blow tube. I'm going to heat this up and then pull really slightly, but making sure to keep that nice and evenly heated. And that's going to help start to create the neck of the Sherlock. So I'm going to pull and stretch that out. Alright, and once I have that kind of stabilized, the next thing that I'm going to do is heat up the bottom section of the piece and kind of mimic that same move that I made. But before I do that, I want to add the mouthpiece in, the Maria for the mouthpiece. So I'm going to heat that up, push together, and create a nice Maria, hollow Maria for the mouthpiece. If you're having trouble with this particular move, feel free to attach a blow hose to the other side and that may give you some additional stability. So I'm just pushing and making that nice Maria. And I'm going in for a second heat here to try to even everything out. Heating it up, pushing it, and there we go. Let that stabilize, let that cool down. And I'm just holding it back and forth, moving it around to make sure it's centered. I'm gonna use my V-blade here to create that nice little cutoff section that's going to really allow me to remove my my piece at the end with uh, much more precision and then the next thing I want to do is heat up the uh, bottom of the piece the bottom of the stem and pull that down a little bit and you can see here we go we're starting to make that shape of the, the stem of the Sherlock I'm just going to stretch out the top just a little bit more so I can add a, a bit of a difference in between the two. So now I'm just going to heat up that center Maria and accentuate that and make sure that it's got the look that I want. Remove my punty 
and then I'm going to blow out the end here where I'm going to be connecting the, the, the bowl or the can and heating that up, picking out any excess glass. You always want to try to make sure to work as clean as possible along the way and that'll be improved the longer you blow glass. So I'm just going to heat this up to pop in a little bit of a hole. There you go, open that up. And now that's prepped up so that I can attach the can or the bowl piece, whatever you'd like to call it on this piece. I'm using my, you know, uh, strongly tapered reamer here, severely tapered. Open that up and create enough space to attach. So now I have my can piece here and I'm gonna heat it up. And I'm gonna marve it into a, um, a triangle shape, similar to the shapes of the horn actually, in a sense. It's a taper shape. So first I'm gonna blow a little bit. And then I'm gonna heat up and marve. When I marve, I'm gonna heat it up at an angle. So I'm gonna hold the back end down or the blow tube side down below the marver and then turn and it'll help create that taper that I'm looking for. I'm gonna open up the front here using my seven millimeter rod, pulling that so that way that the inner bubble goes close to the surface as possible. And that's gonna help me open up and blow out a bubble in a precise location without uh, too much thick glass around it. So you can see it getting thinner and thinner and blow and really right at the surface there. It's just gonna take one little pop to get it out now. You can do this slowly over a few times. You wanna be careful not to produce a bunch of bubble trash or something. So I'm just gonna push that bowl in, look at it, make sure that it's what I want here. And I'm gonna heat up both sides, nice and hot, and connect those together. Oh, it looks like there's a little bit of a hole, so you can heat that up and grab your tungsten and just kind of push it together, and that way the glass will seal block the bowl and push and there we go so now we're creating the u-bend so uh, we're gonna go around the bottom and kind of uh, a softer flame a little bit softer of a flame and heat it up plug the hole and blow and you can see it kind of starting to come out and bend into that u-shape So now that the U-shape is done, the next thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a little bit more glass that I'm gonna use for the carb. So I have another bubble of the rainbow, uh, the purple rainbow by Greasy Glass, and I'm gonna stretch out a little bit of it so that I can uh, make a raised carb. So just heat that up, put that other bubble aside for next time. And I'm gonna shape this to the size that I want. I'll probably end up taking a little bit uh, down, a little bit off as I after I attach it, but it's always good to have extra glass as opposed to too little glass. So flare that open and pop a hole in the piece, and then I'll be able to connect those two together. I'm gonna heat up the uh, carb here, and I have a hole in the side. Just push and then pull a little bit and you can see that seal stretch out and get connected. All right. And now we're gonna pull off a little bit of excess there and maybe pop the hole. Blowing it out, try to even out the walls. And you've seen where the best place to pop that hole is as I'm looking around 
and kind of sealing that up. Whenever I make these uh, Sherlock's, I usually attach an opal, and today is no different. I had to attach an opal, I think. It's part of, part of how these Sherlock's go, I guess. So I'm just going to attach the opal. I want the opal to be a little bit hotter than the piece itself. And I want to stick it and then pull. So now I have my bunts in here. And I, this is kind of the meat of the class. And so I turned on my bunts in and I'm able to go in and work these components and these attachments without putting the piece back in the kiln. So I changed the cameras around a little bit so that you could still have multiple angles of the... Uh, the Bunsen. There's many different kinds of Bunsen's that can work uh, for this kind of work. I prefer this one which is called uh, the Carlisle uh, Shorty I think uh, is what this is called. You can get this from Mountain Glass Arts and I feel like the throw of the flame is really nice and kind of uh, soft so it really engulfs the piece and creates a nice nice warm place for it to sit that kind of mimics the kiln. So now I'm just going in here into the opal, heating it up, just making sure that's all nice and melted in. And I have a horn grabbed out of the kiln. And I'm heating it up a little bit in the Bunsen and continuing to heat up my Sherlock in the Bunsen. The Bunsen's fully on and it's a little difficult to see the flame from this angle, but it is fully on and the Dididium kind of hides that flare a little bit. So I'm going to heat this up and stick it on. I want to make sure that the horn is much hotter than the piece because otherwise I'll distort the piece. Attach that and then I can shape that up a little bit. So I'll push it on and pull just a little bit and then I'll add any final adjustments and I'll curve it around definitely go through the center um, or through the attachment area around the crease and make sure that that's all nice and fully melted in so you can see that the whole thing is getting a little hotter and I'm able to move it around and kind of adjust the shape a little bit so I'm going to take my three millimeter punty and just kind of grab that tip of the horn and pull it so I finish up the taper make it come to to a very nice point and then I can adjust the final shape and um, angle so I'm gonna heat that up pull a little bit off kind of clean up the end there and then I'm not gonna need to put this back in the kiln that's the whole exercise tonight is to keep this out of the kiln uh, one time I was working on a piece it was a piece with a lot of flowers on it like a cage piece and I, I had it on the lathe under Bunsen's for like five hours maybe um, without putting it in the kiln so it's definitely a really useful technique that can go a long way so I've just melted in the end of the horn there and back into the Bunsen and this this piece will change color a little bit over time um, of reheating it and not because the color purple rainbow uh, is a, a bit of a striking color which makes it really interesting to use so I have my second horn here and I'm gonna heat it up make sure that the Sherlock itself is colder and then the horn is hot so I can push it right on there and then pull just a little bit and that should really help even out the attachment So now I'm going to heat it up and shape it a little bit. You can do this with your tweezers or you can do this with the punty. So I'm just going to grab onto the cold part and move it around a little bit with my tweezers and adjust it and then go back in and kind of finish that curvature out and make sure that that's smooth and nice all along uh, the whole length of the, of the horn. going in with my mini torch here and then smoothing that out you can see that all kind of melt together and add another horn and then I can just keep on adding horns <clears throat> I 
and you can see that that Bunsen is just burning and uh, that's okay it's okay propane is relatively cheap and you want to make sure to use all of the tools necessary and at your disposal to make the best possible piece so I'm going to go in looks like maybe adjust that curvature just a little bit more heat up the whole thing kind of push it in and there we go all right and now I'm going to go back into the Bunsen and reheat this again just kind of nice and easy in the Bunsen for a few minutes, you know, three to five minutes each time in between each step. But that lowers the time tremendously because otherwise I'd have to be putting it in the kiln for at least 10 minutes a time in between each attachment to really slow down the process of making the work. So I got this long horn on. I don't know about the curvature. I might change this a little bit. It might be too long for the piece, but I try to attach the smaller things towards the top and the bigger things towards the bottom. I heat that up and adjust it a little bit, put it back into the Bunsen. And you can see there we go, heating it up, soaking all that nice heat in. and then going around the edge of the seal to make sure that that's completely sealed, all smooth, nice transitions throughout the whole piece. Back into the Bunsen. I'm looking kind of over my glasses sometimes to see where the flame is hitting it. Attach the piece. Make sure that the piece of the horn is much hotter there we go. Pull that a little bit. And push that together. I may remove part of this horn. You know, it doesn't quite fit for me. It's, I think it's sticking out a little bit too much and the curvature is not quite right. But, you know, that's the great thing about glasses that you can always make adjustments and you know remove glass so it's really better to start off with more glass so that in the case where you do need to remove a little bit of glass you have just a little bit extra if you need so I'm gonna pull that off and kind of loop it around and make a nice shape and then pull and kind of bring that to a nice taper all right, now I wanna make sure to put that into the scrap pile or the water bucket so I don't hurt myself later and then make any final adjustments to the horn. Heat it up and pull off that tip. And there we go. And this one's kind of a little bit curved and that's cool. Um, you can make them different, whatever you wanna do on your horns. And you can definitely do this with flowers or marbles or any other thing you want to attach. So keep in mind that the piece has not been in the kiln since I finished the construction part of it. So this has been out of the kiln the entire time. I'll add another horn here in the back. We're going to heat it up, attach, and then pull just a little bit. Break off that punty. And now we're going to heat it up and shape this. Pull a little bit. and then kind of make that curvature what I'd like to see on the piece. And that's the beautiful thing too, is you can make it look however you want. If you want to make all the corns have little curly cues on them, you can. Anyway, so I'll put this back into the Bunsen. You can see it's starting to be cool with all these little horns on them now. And just maybe go in a little bit more for some other decorations. Attach another horn here. It depends where there's room. We're gonna heat that up, break off that punny, 
And now I'm going to push this horn in, make sure that it's really nice and connected and the shape is exactly what I'd like. So I'm just going to go into the bottom here, adjust that shape a little bit. And the reason that we can do this and just keep adjusting and shaping is really because of that Bunsen burner. And that's just critical. I would really recommend that if you don't have one on your bench, that you get one. They're very, very inexpensive uh, comparatively to really how much that's going to help you. Just using my three millimeter rod here to clean that up. Pulling off the tips of each one just to make sure that they're all clean and coming to a nice point. And pulling that off and then back into the Bunsen. <clears throat> And now I'm going to add a few, uh, you know, little dots and decorations just to kind of show you guys how we can continue to attach stuff and add stuff in the Bunsen. Going in with the, um, the GTT Yellow Jacket, which is a torch that I've recently been liking to use. Just making sure that seal looks really nice and even. And back into the Bunsen. And now I'm going to blow out that carb. Pop that out. And let's see, it might be a little bit too much glass. So let me see if I might want to take some of that out. Yeah, it's a little bit too much glass. You can see I'm just going to take some of this out. Make it a little bit smaller. And I think it's going to fit the shape a little bit better. blow and open up that hole and then we're going to use that reamer to get everything nice and open but it still looked like there was a little bit too much glass on there so we're going to do that one more time and get that to be the right size and then back into the Bunsen and you can always check that out make sure that it's looking like what you want and if not you can change anything so now I'm gonna add some dots and continually to keep this in the Bunsen and heating this up I have not put this in the kiln yet so just adding some dots and I'll be able to go in with the either the little torch or the yellow jacket and melt those down in a little bit so it's a nice even smooth transition for everything always keeping it in the Bunsen. I can even work in the Bunsen as you can see I'm melting these dots down and continually to work in the Bunsen itself. Melting that in, melting those dots for some just a little bit of extra decoration on here. And then I'm going to add a few dots onto the stem and show you guys kind of how to do that because the stem can be a really tricky place because if you heat it up too much it'll definitely move and it could even break. So just gonna try to put the dots on here while keeping the stem cold. And then going in, melting them down just a little bit, but not enough to melt the stem, the mouthpiece of the, of the Sherlock, watching the edges. Here we go. Kind of fixing up anything that's left looking at all of the shape I'm going over each dot but I'm making sure to not go too many dots in the same location so if I'm going to do one on the stem then I'll go back to the one on the can then I'll go back to one on another part of the stem as I don't want to heat the stem up too much for it to bend or get misshapen in any way the mini the smith um the GTT Yellow Jacket is a pretty nice torch. You just have to be careful about how you adjust it. And there's the Sherlock. All right, you guys. I just wanted to review what we did today. And thank you so much for checking out that Sherlock. Step one is we're going to form and blow out three bubbles for the Sherlock and body. So there's been plenty of information about how to blow these bubbles out the way that I like to do it. Of course, you can uh, coil pot as well. Step two is you're going to gather for the horns and make the attachments with the horns. So you're going to prep up all your horns. Make sure you use a nice gradient heat. 
Step three is you're going to shape the first bubble into the stem of the Sherlock and you're going to prep up for the attachment. You're going to get that into a nice shape, maybe make a Maria, open that up, get ready to go. All right, you guys, step number four is you're going to form the second bubble into the bowl segment of the piece. Make sure you pop the hole, push the bowl. And there's a lot of ways to do this. Step number five is we're going to attach the two pieces together with a side seal. And you can use a bridge here if you'd like as well. Step number six is we're going to form the third bubble into the carb. Probably not use the whole bubble, just some of it. Step number six is we're going to attach the carb to the rest of the piece. And now we're going to start adding the attachments using the Bunsen burner. And this is really the meat of this video and the most important thing that I wanted to show you guys. So we keep that out of the kiln for a long time while we use the Bunsen. And thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for the order. I appreciate that very much for the student who ordered this and here you go. All right, you guys, I will see you in the next video. And here's a few glam shots of the piece so that you can check it out. Uh, I really like the way that the purple rainbow came out and the Nemo horns really contrast with that. And all around, I'm happy with this one and stoked to give it to a friend of mine. Thanks a lot for watching, you guys. I'll see you really soon. Uh, for those of you guys who are in the mentorship program, there is a second version of this video that we discussed live. And feel free to go to the mentorship page to check that out for additional information and uh, calendar of the mentorship stuff. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me today. It was really fun making that Sherlock, especially using that Bunsen burner. That's a really great tool and definitely want to give credit to Preston Hanna who really introduced that into the pipe making world as far as I could tell. Anyway, if you guys would like more information on the school or if you'd like to see some of the other content that's on the online school or be part of the community, please feel free to go to revereglass.com. Please sign up for the free trial and I'll be there with you along your journey with glass. If you'd like to hang out with me and the other students on August 25th, please sign up for the school for a free account or a subscription account is fine too. And we'll see you on August 25th. We'll have fun making the new project together. See you guys then.